PLDT Chief Manny Pangilinan says he agreed with the Rufino Prieto family to divest and sell all his shares from the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Pangilinan, through Excel Pacific Holdings Corporation, owns a 13.08% stake in Philippine Daily Inquirer Incorporated and 25% stake in Inquirer Holdings Incorporated. The Rufino Prieto family owns a 68% stake in Pentap Equities Holdings Corporation, which in turn owns 68.8% of Inquirer Holdings. This comes after San Miguel Corporation Chief Ramon Ang accepted the offer of the Rufino Prieto family to buy all the family shares in the Inquirer Group. Pangilinan's divestment will likely give 100% ownership to Ang. Pangilinan says, quote, We told them we are okay to divesting. We said we have no problem with that, so that the takeover will be seamless and we will not get in the way. I guess it will eventually wind up with Ang. Osami City Mayor Reynaldo Parohinog's brother Ricardo is placed on the immigration lookout list as the investigation into the family's alleged drug network continues. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre orders the Bureau of Immigration to issue an immigration lookout bulletin for the Osami City Councilor Friday. Parohinog is also identified as Arthur in Aguirre's memorandum. The search warrant against him names his alias as Ardot or Patok. Parohinog's residence in Barangay Bagakay, Osami City, was also raided by the police before dawn Sunday, but he was not there. Seized from his home were firearms, ammunition, alleged illegal drugs, and drug paraphernalia. President Rodrigo Duterte signs the law providing free tuition for students of 112 state universities and colleges in the country. The Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act is signed Thursday after a meeting between lawmakers and economic managers in Malacanang. Duterte's approval is unexpected given how his economic managers have openly opposed the bill, saying the government does not have enough funds to sustain it. Senior Deputy Executive Secretary Minardo Guevara says the president was convinced that the benefits of the bill outweigh its hefty cost. Guevara says it is now up to Congress to decide how best to fund the bill. Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno earlier claimed the policy would require funding of 100 billion pesos, which the government cannot afford at the moment. But some lawmakers said figures shown by the economic managers were misleading and that only around 14 billion pesos would be needed to fund the law. The Commission on Audit flags the Bureau of Customs and the Bureau of Treasury for missteps in the handling of confiscated Marcus wealth, including jewelry that may cost the government millions. COA says 42.28 million pesos worth of funds from the Marcus loot is missing and cannot be found in any of the accounting books of the BTR. COA is asking the BTR to provide pertinent documents to prove the government still has the money. For the BOC, COA says the non-submission of appraisal reports resulted in the understating of the value of former First Lady Imelda Marcus's confiscated jewelry collection. The collection is composed of 60 pieces of extravagant jewelry and loose gemstones and are considered the most expensive among those kept at the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. The jewelry were confiscated in 1986, but as of December 31, 2016, an appraisal report has not been submitted. Special Counsel Robert Mueller has put together a grand jury to investigate Russia's interference with the 2016 presidential election, a step toward possible criminal indictments. The move is a sign that the sweeping federal investigation, which includes allegations that Trump campaign officials coordinated with Russia to tilt the election in the Republicans' favor, is gathering pace. The establishment of a grand jury will allow Mueller, a former FBI director, to subpoena documents and get sworn testimony. President Donald Trump has repeatedly denied allegations of collusion. But Trump has been forced to acknowledge that his eldest son, Donald Jr., his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and former campaign advisor, Paul Manafort, did meet a Kremlin-connected lawyer to get dirt on 2016 election rival Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. 